Yet another wave of violence rocking the city of Chicago tonight. Just yesterday, eight people were shot and wounded in a period of eight hours. And with each day that goes by, Chicago city officials, led by Rahm Emanuel, seem more and more powerless to stop it. This week, John o. Caldwell, a Fox News political analyst and Chicago native, went out to speak with members of the worst hit communities and find out what's driving the bloodshed. Watch. In this neighborhood, everybody want to be better than the next person. Everybody want to rock the better, better jeans than what, you know what you got on, the better shoe. They want to be the one on top. So these boys looking at it like, hey, let me sell drugs, let me do this and that. That's why it's a lot of violence. And I believe if you get some of these boys into jobs, her money in their pocket so they can survive, take care of what they need to take care of, maybe it'll stop some of this stuff. Joining us now with more is Jono Caldwell. Jono, uh, it's great to see you tonight. Uh, you know, it was interesting uh, what Nini just said there. And she said everyone wants yeah. to be on, on top, have what the other guy has or better. Uh, I don't know if yeah. she was talking about house or car or shoes or what. But Everything. she said if they had All a job, maybe it would, yeah, maybe it would be better. To get the job, you have to have the skills. You have to have the educational background, a parent or role model who helps with the education and the guidance. The problem is a lot of these kids don't have any of that. And, and then the gangs walk in. Yeah, Laura, I think what I, what I really saw here this week when doing these interviews with a number of the high-ranking gang members throughout the city of Chicago is there is a deficit in personal responsibility. A lot of parents that left the home who believed that their parents maybe were too harsh on them as they were growing up, they allowed their kids to run free. And as a result, we see the bloodshed. Yale did a study in 2015 which said for every 100,000 residents in the city of Chicago, there's on average one white person shot, 28 Hispanic shot, and a whopping 113 African American shots and shot in the city of 2.7 million people. This is beyond the pale of what we should see in any American city. And I know and I thank you for your coverage on this, because you've done it from your heart. This hasn't been political for you. You see the same thing that I see in a lot of the African-American residency in Chicago, which is no American city should be like this. There should be no person in an American no. city to have to live through this level of fear. And what we're seeing, especially speaking to the, the, the gangbangers in, in the city of Chicago, as a lot of those folks feel that this was a life that they were preconditioned for. This isn't something that, that they necessarily chose. As one told me, this is the life that chose him. So this is, I mean, just unfortunate. And Gianno, the, the need for investment or business to come in, as we've talked about before, and it, it's a, it seems that how do you solve this problem? Until the streets are safe, we need more detectives, more police, more personal responsibility, more role models. It's hard to get the business to come in, even with tax incentives that Rahm Emanuel, as far as I know, hasn't been willing to talk about. But the, even with tax incentives, if you go in there in some Englewood and some of these other areas, you're worried about your safety or your employee's safety, that's, that's going to be a heavy lift. It, it will be, but, you know, I was really happy to hear from an individual who runs a, a program or organization called Ex-Cons for Community and Social Change. His name is Tyrone uh, Mohammed. He is actually an ex-con. He went to jail, I believe, for about 30 years for murder. He started a program when he got out of jail, and he goes and gets more ex-cons, and they go back into those communities in which they robbed and steal from, the communities that they murdered and, and which led to bloodshed. So that was something I thought was particularly encouraging, because they're talking to the youth. They're looking to put those individuals in jobs. And I was, I was really happy to hear that, because those are stories that we normally don't, don't hear. Those are stories that we ne normally actually, don't see. Jana, we uh, actually have, we out, Jana, we actually have that part of your discussion with him. I think we're going to play it now. Let's watch. Most guys involved with my organization have, have served 20 years or more in prison. Mm. We are men who recognize that we made a mistake. We're not sitting around white waiting on some benevolent white person, the politicians, the legislation to change our condition. We know that we helped perpetrate some of the violence in our community. And, and we, we, we learned long, a long time ago while we was in prison that we will have to change it ourselves. Uh, Gianna, final thoughts real quick. 
We need more of that in the city of Chicago. There needs to be an expansion of personal responsibility because no one can rely on the government to solve all its problems, and that includes the violence in Chicago. They are part of the solution, but they are not the solution in totality. Well, you need, you need more police. Uh, you need more uh, cops on the ground. You need more detectives so you actually Absolutely. solve some of these crimes. And uh, th that's where the mayor, that's where the mayor and, uh, and, and city officials kick in. John, thanks so much. There's been so a much. failure of leadership on, on the level of the city and as well as the state. There's been a failure of leadership now, in Chicago. Well, we've been trying to get uh, Rahm Emanuel on the show and other aldermen and not much luck there. So we'll keep trying. Yeah. John, uh, thanks so much.